Welcome to Ohio State University Extension's Reshape, Put the Dietary Guidelines on Your Plate program. I'm Sylvia Altenberger, Program Specialist for the Family Nutrition Program. I'll be joined by Lisa Barlich, FCS Educator from Ross County, and Amber Regan, Dietetic Intern, Department of Human Nutrition here at OSU. I'll begin the program with information about the health benefits of grains. Lisa will explain the difference between whole, refined, and enriched grains, terms to look for on food labels, and tips on how to increase whole grain products into our diet. The program will conclude with Amber demonstrating some tasty whole wheat peanut butter cookies and savory breakfast muffin recipes she selected to demonstrate using whole grain products. You'll have an opportunity to write questions or comments in the chat box and send them to us. We will discuss them in the last segment of our program. Recipes and recordings for all six series of Reshape can be found on the Community Nutrition website listed above. The Dietary Guidelines 2010 has some key recommendations in the food and nutrients to increase. I will focus on the second item which states make at least half your grains whole grains. The refining of whole grains involves a process that results in the loss of vitamins, minerals, and dietary fiber. Most refined grains are enriched with iron, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, and folic acid. This returns some, but not all of the vitamins and minerals that were removed. One item that is important to note is that folic acid is added to enriched refined grains to a level that doubles the amount lost during the refining process. This is especially important for women who are in their childbearing years. In the U.S. marketplace, consumers have a wide variety of grain-based food options. Americans generally eat enough total grains, but most of the grains consumed are refined grains rather than the whole grains. Some of the refined grain foods are also high in solid fats and added sugars, such as cakes, cookies, donuts, and other desserts. These food items should be reduced. Less than 5% of Americans consume the minimum recommended amount of whole grains. On average, Americans eat less than one ounce equivalent of whole grains per day. So we have a long way to go to get to the recommendation of making at least half of our grains whole grains. Eating grains, especially whole grains, provides health benefits. People who eat whole grains as part of a healthy diet have a reduced risk of some chronic diseases. Grains provide many nutrients that are vital for the health and maintenance of our bodies. Dietary fiber from whole grains or other foods may help reduce blood cholesterol levels and may lower risk of heart disease, obesity, and type 2 diabetes. Fiber is important for proper bile function. Fiber containing foods such as whole grains help provide a feeling of fullness with fewer calories and research does suggest that you are less likely to absorb all the calories in a high fiber foods that you consume. Folate, another B vitamin, helps the body form red blood cells. Women of childbearing age who may become pregnant should consume adequate folate from foods and or supplements to reduce the risk of neural tube defects during fetal development. Individuals who consume all of their grains as whole grains should include some that have been fortified with folic acid, such as some ready-to-eat whole grain cereals. Again, this is particularly important for women who are capable of becoming pregnant. Next will be Lisa talking to you about the difference between whole, refined, and enriched grains. She'll also talk about the terms to look for on food labels and tips on how we can include more whole grains in our diets. Okay, Lisa, you're up next. Thank you. Sylvia has been talking about the types of health benefits that we get from grains. Now we're going to talk about the types of grains that we see in the market. We have whole grains, which have been left intact during processing. They include the bran, the germ, and the endosperm. Refined grains have been milled to remove the bran and the germ. That process removes much of the fiber, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants found in grains. While there have been an explosion in the number of whole grain products available in stores, 
we have continued to see the largest percentage of our foods made from refined grains. White bread and rice are possibly our best examples of a refined grain product. Enriched grains have had the three major B vitamins, that's thiamine, riboflavin, and niacin, as well as iron added back so they are in the same proportion as when they were a whole grain. Enriched grains have about twice the amount of folic acid in them as their whole grain counterpart, which Sylvia mentioned is very important for the prevention of birth defects. Examples of whole grains include bulgur, which is also known as cracked wheat. It's a wheat that's pre-cooked and broken into pieces. Buckwheat is a seed that's been grown in North America since the 1700s. It's used mainly for cereals and buckwheat pancakes today. Oats or oatmeal may also be called rolled oats or steel cut oats. The unique thing about oats is in that processing, the bran and the germ are rarely removed. So almost all oat products are whole grain. Whole wheat is the grain that we are most used to. Two-thirds of all grains consumed in the United States are wheat. Worldwide, it's the most, third most consumed grain. Millet is a seed of a grass that's often eaten in Asia and Africa. And quinoa is a grain-like seed that's been popular in South America. It's actually a pseudo-cereal, a food that's treated like a grain and contains many of the same nutrients as a grain. It's often seen in cereals, crackers, pasta, and breads, especially those foods that are gluten-free. Other examples include brown or wild rice. Wild rice is a North American seed of a grass, not actually a grain. Rice is a good addition to soups, side dishes, salads, and puddings, or as a breakfast food. Whole grain corn is the most produced grain worldwide. It is used in many things like corn chips, taco shells, corn muffins, and breakfast foods like pancakes and waffles. Popcorn is the same thing that we're all familiar with. We just want to leave out the heavy butter and salt to make it a healthy whole grain. Whole grain barley has the highest fiber of all the whole grains. and It's often used in soups, but is also good as a breakfast bread or pilaf. Whole grain rye is a hearty grain that grows well in cooler, wetter climates of northern Europe and Russia. It's a popular grain for high fiber breads. The whole grain stamp was developed by the Whole Grain Council in about 2002. It is formed the council to educate consumers about the benefits of whole grains and promote a positive whole grain message and whole grain products. The stamp that's developed has come about in a different way, but now we see two different types of stamps available. The one on the left is similar to their first stamp and it marks a product as having at least 8 grams of whole grain per serving. A product with this label would be half whole grain. The stamp on the right has been added more recently and shows that a product is 100% whole grain. We know with our dietary guidelines that they're promoting that we have at least three of our servings a day as a whole grain. So we can either do that as six half whole grain foods or three 100% whole grain foods. The stamp originally wasn't found on a lot of generic or store brands, but today over 300 companies are using it. And many of those are major companies like Kraft, Frito-Lay, General Mills, but we also see it with some of the smaller and the generics and those kind of companies, some of the companies that we think of as serving more healthful foods like Nature's Path or Kashi. Some purchasing tips we need to keep in mind of so that we won't be taken advantage of. And those, when we're looking at labels, we might think that multigrain, seven grain, bran, organic, stone ground, 
100% wheat or cracked wheat would mean that it was a 100% whole grain, but that's not always true. One example is with breads and that we will see where they've added molasses or raisins to a brown wheat bread that will make it look like it's a whole grain. In fact, it's not, so we need to look at the ingredient list and we want something to say that it's whole or whole grain before a word like wheat, corn, and barley and to be in the first two ingredients on the label. Here's a couple package examples. These are both whole grain foods but the product on the left, the cracker, has only five grams of whole grain per serving and we've already talked about that we're looking for something to have eight grams of whole grain per serving to be considered a half whole grain. Now the food on the right, the taco shell, does have 16 grams of whole grain per serving, so it would be considered a good whole grain choice. Here's a couple other packages. The whole grain rice has the 100% whole grain stamp on it. The active lifestyle chewy bar has only 8 grams per serving, so it's a half whole grain. You notice that the rice, it's on the front of the package, where the cereal bar, it's on the top. So you do need to kind of look around. It's not always the easiest location to see the stamp. At the bottom, you also see another cracker. It says it's made with whole grains, but when you turn it over and look at the label, you'll notice that the main ingredient is an enriched flour and whole wheat flour is only the third ingredient so it's not one of the first two which is what we were suggesting that you look for. When you look for some tips for adding whole grains to your diet I think one of the easiest is to have whole grain pasta. When this product came out some people did not like the fact that they felt it was more chewy or maybe had a nuttier flavor. I guess I enjoy that nutty flavor, but if you haven't tried it recently, I would suggest you try it again. It's one of those products that has developed and adapted over time. It is a very good product nowadays and there's a lot of different varieties, a lot of different shapes available. You want to try the whole grain pasta in the lasagna noodle. Think about the fact that you're putting a lot of different sauces on it, veggies, some cheese. So the pasta is not really the main taste that you have with that recipe. Just make sure you look at the box because not all products that look like they would be a whole grain are. We've already talked about popcorn. It is an easy snack. Go ahead and pop it ahead and put it in a Ziploc bag to take for your office snack. Many of the breads that are available now are whole grain breads. When you look for things like pitas, wraps, English muffins, sandwich rounds, bagels, look for that stamp or that whole grain seal or look for one of the first two ingredients to be a whole grain. There also are tortillas that are with the wraps and they're usually in the refrigerated section of the store. There's also an increasing number of breakfast cereals that are whole grain. Just don't forget to look at the sodium and sugar content if you're trying to select a healthy cereal. Whole grain is important. When you're looking at the grains, and we've already talked about things like millet, quinoa, barley, bulgur, you're also often looking for a recipe that has those in it. The USDA Snap Ad Recipe Finder has quinoa and black bean salad, and a number of other recipes are available with those whole grains on the Snap Ad sites and other extension sites. So if you do a little research, you can find some grain recipes that are available. Oats are certainly an easy whole grain addition. You can eat it, of course, as a cereal, as a topping for hot fruit. You could add it to your meatloaf, burgers, 
muffins, or cookie. You can also put your oatmeal in the blender to smooth it into an oat flour, which is a good addition in baked goods like muffins or cookies. Snack foods and tortillas are available as well. There are a number of crackers and cookies too. We just need to check and see that it's a whole grain in the first couple ingredients. Whole wheat flour can be added to recipes that you're baking at home. You don't want to usually go over half of whole wheat flour in a recipe that you've converted. You may want to start with a quarter or a third and move on up. I know I use it with my homemade pancakes, half whole wheat flour. My family loves them and we have them many weekends. We also enjoy muffins made that way. One reason that you don't want to go all whole wheat flour if you're converting is that they may be heavier and not have as much volume and that's due to the increased protein that's in the whole wheat flour. And don't forget to ask when you're dining out. If they have a whole grain bun or a whole grain bread for your sandwich or whole wheat pasta. Some of the major chains are now carrying those and many restaurants now have breakfast cereals and pancakes that are whole grain with added fruits or cinnamon. It may be more expensive to eat it out but if you're looking for convenience don't forget to ask. There are more and more choices available. Next we're going to see Amber Riggin as she demonstrates a couple ideas for whole grain additions to our diet. She has a savory breakfast muffin and a whole wheat peanut butter cookie. Hello, uh, today we have Amber Regan and she's our OSU dietetic student that's working with us uh, this summer. And uh, hi Amber. Hi so, Sylvia, how are you? I'm good. So what do we have today? Today we're going to make a whole wheat peanut butter cookie. Oh. So this goes, well, me too, <laughs> it doesn't everybody. So this goes along with what you were talking about earlier on making our whole grains, half of our grains whole grains. Do here. Well, you'll do the liquids and I'll do the uh, dry ingredients. So we'll start here with one cup of peanut butter. And this is a peanut butter cookie, so you can tell that that's one of the main ingredients. Okay. And there's a lot of nutrition in peanut butter, so I guess that's why we kind of selected this recipe. Mm -hmm. And it's nice because the peanut butter makes it a nice moist cookie. And then we also have a half a cup of honey. A little bit less if you're not real keen on the taste of honey, but it adds moistness as well as sweetness. Okay. And then we have a half a cup of butter. And that is kind of a lot of butter, so we should realize that it's a cookie. It's just a regular cookie. So it's still an, an occasional treat, right? Other substitutions to reduce the, the fat in our products. So what else could we use in cookies? Well, a lot of times when you're making a cake or um, any kind of baking, you use applesauce. And that's something that you can use a little bit of. You can't replace all the fat with it, but you can use a little bit of, maybe like a third of it, as cookies are really dependent on the fat or the butter in there. Okay, so we can substitute um, some of it, and then what about the other margarines that I see on the market? That'll change the texture a little bit too, like the applesauce will. Mm -hmm. The margarine, the lower fat margarines, or the, the margarine that's a tub, so it's a little bit softer, mm -hmm. it won't make the cookie quite as crisp and it'll also be a little bit a little bit thinner so it won't be quite okay. as tall. So. Okay. And then lastly we have one egg. Mm -hmm. Crack that in there. And then also with the butter you might want to uh, soften it a little bit first. We, soften we have uh, three quarters of a cup of white flour and then a full cup of whole wheat so the cookies are actually mostly whole wheat okay. but there is still some white flour in there too lighten the texture up a little bit. If you've never had anything that's all whole wheat flour, it tends to be a little bit heavy and grainy. So okay. lightening that up a little and, bit. And we are suggesting that people make uh, at least half of their grains whole. So even in the cookie, mm -hmm. we're, we're uh, practicing what we preach here. Yep, you're on your way. And then we have a little bit of baking powder to help the cookie rise. So we have about a teaspoon here. And lastly, we have a cup of brown sugar. 
or I'm sorry, a half cup of brown sugar. And you want to pack that in with brown sugar. Just that up and mix it all together. All right, and you want to incorporate that in slowly. So, oh, no, you're doing just fine. And then you just want to blend the ingredients until it's just moist. So our batter is nice and stirred and smooth. So I'll roll these up into small cookies if you want to uh, smash the top in with a fork and give them their characteristic mark. So how big will these cookies be? Well, they'll be uh, standard size cookies when baked. But when you're rolling them out or when you're rolling them with your hand, mm -hmm. probably about a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons. Okay. We'll that. Size. So you just kind of roll it into a little ball, and you can see how sticky it is. And the recipe should make around 36 cookies. So more. Fill the whole pan, and then you will put that in the oven at 350 and bake for right around 15 to 20 minutes. They've been in the oven just about 15 minutes, so you can see that they're slightly golden on top. They're, they're beautiful looking and they smell really good too. We're back again. All right, so what are we going to make now? Today we're going to make a whole grain muffin, but it's not your normal muffin. This is a savory muffin instead of a sweet muffin. So if you're not the type of person who likes sweets in the morning, this is a nice option for breakfast. Okay. And you can also make these ahead of time. It makes 12 muffins. You can stick them in the freezer and pop one out in the morning or whenever you need a snack. Oh, what a great idea to save time in the morning mm -hmm. and eat healthy. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll have you do the uh, dry ingredients this okay. time. So we started out in a large mixing bowl with um, one cup of whole, or I'm sorry, white flour in here. And then we have another cup of whole wheat flour. Okay. And then once again, we're aiming for making our grains at least uh, half of them. Whole. Mm -hmm. So here we go with the whole grain. And so that is a perfect representation of that. Okay. We've got half white and half whole grain. Okay. And also the, the whole grain has more nutrients, so that's why we also shoot for the whole grains. And then we have a mixture of both baking powder, which we have about a teaspoon and a half here, baking powder, okay. and also baking soda. And the baking powder and the baking soda are used as leaveners, so that lightens it and gives a little bit more of a, um, of a fluffy texture to it. Once. And then we'll add a half a teaspoon of salt. And then go ahead and mix those up. And I'll add in our liquid ingredients, which there's not a whole lot of liquid ingredients. We just have a quarter of a cup of butter. And to make things easier on yourself, you might want to melt that first. And one egg. And if you'd like, you can use a quarter of a cup of egg substitute. Okay. Yeah. If you really have to, if you have to watch your cholesterol, that would be a good way to do it. You have to provide options. So go ahead and mix that up, and then we'll add in one minced garlic clove and just about a tablespoon of green onion. And you want to incorporate your wet ingredients into your dry ingredients. So I'll pour those in there. Okay, so not to, don't over stir, is that what you're trying to say? Yes, exactly. Okay. With the and last step, you want to pour in one cup of skim milk. It's just moist. And then we'll mix in our final ingredients, the good stuff. We have a um, three quarters of a cup of low fat shredded cheese. Okay. And I've actually got a mix here, so we've got a packaged low fat cheese, but I also shredded up my own low fat cheddar. Oh, okay. So, That'll give it some good taste. Yes. Mix that in. We have a quarter of a cup of Parmesan cheese. So we have one cup total. If you don't have Parmesan cheese, don't worry about it. Just use a cup of any other low-fat cheese that you have. Okay. And we're always aiming either for for low fat to uh, to watch our fat content. Mm -hmm. And if you like fat free, you can use fat free as well. A lot of people don't really care for that. And this is a nice way to step down without noticing a drastic change. Okay. And then we'll put in. This is about six slices of chopped up turkey bacon. Okay. So it adds a little bit of a meaty flavor without adding too much fat. And then about a cup of shredded um, zucchini. That's basically one medium-sized zucchini. Okay. 
Now we have a greased muffin pan. Okay. So it makes 12 muffins, and you can just fill them up about three quarters of the way full. Okay, 12. That's a good number. Wow. Well, I'm excited for you to try them as well. All right. So if you make them at home, you might want to let them cool down a few minutes, but since we're both excited, we'll go ahead and pull it out of there and watch out. It's very hot. All right. So let's split this open and give it a try. They smell really good. There you go. Dig in. Oh my gosh, that is really good. Oh, good. 